Okay, so we're getting ready to sand the trim out. Um, so we're looking to get everything out um, that might be in there from the previous paint job. Uh, what we'll do is go through with a 220 grit. Uh, this paint job is only five years old. It's, it's in pretty good shape. Um, so we don't need anything more aggressive than 220 for this job. Um, it is latex, so you're not gonna go too, too uh, hard with the pressure and, and stay in a spot too long. You keep your hand moving along the wood. Um, but anyways, we're going to use a 220, uh, the Norton uh, Pro Sand, it, it, it holds up good, it um, is smooth paper. Uh, when we're all done, we'll go ahead and use a bristle attachment on a vacuum, clean all the surfaces on all the woodwork and all the doors and, you know, out a couple feet, a couple inches, and then we'll go through with a tack cloth. Tack cloth is a very important step uh, before you get to painting, uh, whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or if you're a professional. Uh, this is what gets all the leftover dust. So you're gonna see we'll, in a few minutes we'll open this up. Uh, it's a piece of paper about this big and it's, it's sticky. Uh, we'll take it and go over every surface and uh, make sure everything's clean and that the, all the dust is removed. You should get very little dust on this. This is to pick up the rest, the remainder of the dust that the vacuum leaves behind. Uh, if you don't vacuum your trim, if you don't vacuum up these patches, uh, you will have a very subpar paint job. Uh, it, it will look like a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, so if you do this, these steps, and you, you sand, you clean with the vacuum, you clean with the tack cloth, it's the most important part to painting the trim. And the whole paint job is in the trim. Okay, so as you sand, you want to make sure that you're getting it in and out of all these grooves. Sometimes you have to bend the paper to get inside here and get those straight edges. Where the contours, you're going to make sure that you're using the cusp of your hand here to get around that. And if you uh, could feel through the through the camera here through the video. Uh, this feels very smooth. Uh, there's no bumps or uh, or nicks or, or dents in there. Uh, we did go through and patch the trim. Uh, we used joint compound on this one because there was just a few uh, surfacey dents. Uh, this will smooth it all out, and then we'll go through with an oil-based primer and spot prime as needed. Um, also, the purpose uh, to sanding is to allow you to have a great bond between the coats. Um, a lot of people use uh, liquid deglosser. Um, I've done that before. It's, it's kind of a, a cheap, kind of faster way uh, to get things done. Um, it has its place, but in most people's homes that we're in, uh, we're using sandpaper. Uh, it's more of an old school way to do things, uh, but it gives, it gives a better finish because not only are you deglossing the surface, uh, but you're actually getting it smooth. Where the liquid deglosser, um, uh, companies like M1, make make a liquid deglosser uh, but that is not going to get uh, the imperfections out of the trim that are there it's just going to basically dull the trim up so that it's ready to receive a fresh coat um, also if you're mul applying multiple coats uh, we will not be applying multiple coats on this job uh, as, as i said earlier it's it's a day and a half job that we're going to be here uh, we will always sand and clean between coats um, at, for every coat um, even if we're doing a prime coat, sand clean after, uh, first coat of paint, sand clean after, and then we would do the last coat and then leave that alone. Okay, so here's the tack cloth after we're done. You can see there's hardly any dust on it, but what you do pick up a lot of times is grease off of these hinges, uh, the black grease that comes behind these. So all that stuff's very important to remove. You want all contaminants gone off the trim uh, before you start to paint. So uh, we're gonna get at uh, the spraying here and get this thing set up.